I mean, the day of weddings, I would get almost sick to my stomach with anxiety. Uh, I always did a good job. Like the pictures always came out great. Like the people were happy. Ultimately, it's just not where my heart is. I thought about quitting a lot and just like, maybe this just isn't the career for me. You know, maybe I need to find something else to do. This clearly just isn't working. Welcome to the Studio Takeover Podcast. I'm Cat Ford Coates. I am here today with Alina Flory uh, of Alina Lauren Photography out of Seattle. Alina, welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I'm so glad you're here. And I know the audience will be too. A lot of podcasts focus purely on the success of the people that have gone through their education. And mm-hmm. I'm taking kind of a different approach. You know, some of the people that I have interviewed for the the podcast here are doing quite well. They're established, but I'm also bringing in kind of live mentoring for people who are in those beginning phases. So I think it's really brave for you to be here and I'm so Thank appreciative, you. but I'm also hopeful too, that however our conversation unfolds today, that it gives you an opportunity to really get some traction as you get ready to launch your business. Yeah, I really appreciate you doing this. It is, you know, listening to other podcasts where people are already in those like two, three years on. It's nice to hear perspectives from somebody that's just starting. So, well, and, you know, coming from the space of like, I'm not sure what you've been doing prior to, to photo, but like you've really spent a good bit of time like working on your portfolio and, we've talked in the past, I photographed you at the portrait masters, right. Mm -hmm. About like, I'm just ready to put this thing into like a proper infrastructure and start making money so I can, you know, exit this career and move into photo full time. Yeah. I've been at it for a long time. I mean, (laughs) I'm 36 now. I, I got into photography in high school. Um, like a lot of us, I took photography class with film and darkroom and fell in love with it. I went to college for photography right after that. I graduated in 2006, but like a lot of people have said, they teach you nothing about business. Right. Um, a lot of the professors were not very helpful. And I mean, they would say things like, if you start a business here, when you're done, we'll run you out of business or... What? Like, look to your right, look to your left. Probably both of those people won't be photographers. <laughs> so oh, I was like, God. well, maybe if you guys showed us how, you know. Um, so, you know, when I graduated, I originally wanted to, you know, move to California and work in editorial like Annie Leibovitz and David LaChapelle and all that stuff. But, you know, I was a kid in Tampa Bay, Florida, didn't really have the means to move out to a big city. I heard a quote from Travis Parker from Blank 182. I started getting tattoos in places where I wouldn't be able to get a real job so that (laughs) it would force me to stick with music. So I kind of took that as, you know, I'm going to just only get photography jobs so that my entire resume is photography and I won't be able to do anything else. But in Tampa Bay, that was you know, yearbook photos, the studios at the mall. And, sure. you know, I, I worked for a company for like six years doing newborn hospital portraits. And they also did uh, in-home photography and studios. And I was a manager and training. And the plans for that were always, I'm going to do my own business on the side. And eventually I'll be able to quit these jobs. But this gives me a base salary. Sure. Um, but none of, I mean, all of those jobs paid minimum wage, no benefits. I didn't know what I was doing with my own stuff. So I was sure. doing a lot of shoot and burn, you know, $200. I was excited about, you know, yeah. years just kind of flew by without mm-hmm. doing really anything or making any progress. And by the end of it, I was kind of resentful with photography. Like I didn't even want to look at my camera when I got off work, <laughs> let mm-hmm. alone try and work on my own stuff. I thought about quitting a lot and just like maybe this just isn't the career for me you know maybe I need to find something else to do this clearly just isn't working so at some point my husband and I decided to start a wedding business uh I met him in photography college (laughs) he's the one good thing I got out of that school we decided to do a wedding business because that at that point it became like that's the only way to make money uh I never wanted to do weddings (laughs) 
I was not really like truly excited about it. Then it was like, okay, well, maybe this is a way that we can. The expectation is right. Because it's a wedding. People are going to pay more for it than anything else. And, you know, here's the other thing about that too. You spending a career's length of time being paid peanuts for unsustainable business models. All that's showing you is that people are paying one and $200 for really important parts of their lives, right? Like Mm -hmm. newborns in a hospital, that kind of thing. And so you're not giving yourself the time to actually put pieces in place and explore other opportunities. And then a wedding business in and of itself is its own beast. Like I work Mm -hmm. with a, a lot of what, you know, people who are in weddings that are just really burnt out because it's a lot of physical work. Uh, you know, it's, I always, I always joke, uh, I've said it a couple of times on the podcast, weddings are just 12 hours of burpees, like, and then you're, you're (laughs) lugging gear everywhere, right? You're just down on the ground, up, down on the ground, up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't even want to go to the gym and do burpees getting paid for it. Okay. I can make it work for a minute. (laughs) Um, but then when I started, you know, putting this business model into place, my portrait sales started outpacing in volume and average sale my weddings. But I was never a successful wedding photographer. It was like the most I could ever command for a wedding was like $1,500, which is, Mm -hmm. you know, like... I mean, we only got three weddings in the time that we were doing it. Um, And honestly, I think part of that was almost like self-sabotage kind of, I didn't want to market because that meant I had to shoot a wedding. (laughs) (laughs) So I feel like we really didn't put as much of the work into it as we could have and should have. I mean, the day of weddings, I would get almost sick to my stomach with anxiety. Uh, I always did a good job. Like the pictures always came out great. Like the people were happy. Ultimately, it's just not where my heart is. And I remember... I joined Creative Live because I was buying some wedding courses from like Sal Sincata and Susan Stripling. And I turned it on one day and you know how sometimes they show you like whatever's happening live and whoever's talking. So Sue was on. She was just having a talk about why photographers are afraid to charge yeah. good money. And I remember just sitting on the couch like sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> because she was talking to me, you know, uh, it was everything that I wanted to hear. I remember looking up her work and I was like, oh, I wish I could do that. But I had well, like committed and- to this thing with my husband and I didn't want to just abandon him and be like, never mind, I'm doing this now. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Have fun with those weddings, honey. Yeah. In between that time was COVID. Uh, my husband and I got married. So, like, a lot of stuff happened between then which kind of delayed any kind of progress that I had made on this. So I found these little create spaces in Seattle. Um, They're building specifically for artists and creatives or hobby, craft, whatever you want to use them for. And they're cheap. So my husband and I went in there. We put floors down. We hung lights. We put canvas backdrops on there. And I started folio building. I've been doing that for a year. The first handful I did just you know, friends, people that I knew for free. And I basically told them like, you're going to be my guinea pig while I try all this stuff out that I'm learning. Um, Some of them are troopers. They sat there with me for like four hours while I just tried different things. And then I started offering with like acquaintances, like you'll get five pictures for free and you can buy more if you want to. But um, I am still trying to build my portfolio. And then out of nowhere, uh, somebody that I used to work with came to me and was like, I don't know if you do this, but I'm kind of looking to do like a boudoir, tasteful nude. Ooh, inquiry. Yeah. And I was like, uh, sure. I just got a studio. I can do that. And I just kind of, I, she met me at a coffee shop without really telling me what she wanted to do. And then at the meeting, she told me what she was trying to do. I had no pricing, nothing. So that night I like panic made a price list. So 900 for the smallest package. I think it was like 2,500 for the top package. And she was like, okay, she was leaning towards the middle package. Um, We did her shoot and she bought my top package and upgraded the size of the album. Of course she did. $3,000 sale. I was like, so definitely confirmation that, that I can do it Mm -hmm. for sure. You are still, you have another career that you're working like to kind of give you that security as Mm -hmm. you're finishing up your portfolio. Um, 
what industry are you working in? It's product photography for an online website. They sell like um, consignment luxury goods. It's almost like the real real. It's just a different company. Ooh. Um, yeah. Well, uh, offline, we're going to have to talk about that because yeah, yeah. if it's uh, <laughs> the company that I, I just ordered some some consignment like luxury jewelry and I'm like, it's legit. So Maybe. I'll get I'll Maybe. get your, your take on that after the fact. <laughs> you know, it's very easy. It's stress free. I go in, I shoot my stuff, I can leave. Um, I get paid salary. So my hours are kind of flexible, which is nice. Um, like I can go in super early and take my computer home to edit if I need to leave. Um, so they, they're super flexible on that, which is great. Uh, great. yeah. So, um, unfortunately, I mean, it doesn't pay me much, you know, my monthly salary is 2,800 a month. Uh, which in Seattle does not go very far. Yeah. Uh, That's like a a studio apartment in Seattle. (laughs) mm -hmm. My husband makes about the same as I do. So um, it's not like I can lean on his salary either. And, you know, I have a lot of credit card debt and payments and all sorts of things. So my first goal, I think, is to definitely have my studio pay for itself because I'm self-paying that right now. And even though it's only 300 a month, it is like, a drain. I mean, that's still four grand a year, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. There's there's almost two months of your salary right there. So yeah. now I will ask you this: like, how is your pricing structured today? I still have that same thing that I gave that boudoir. I do want to raise them for sure. Um, it's just a matter of sitting down and actually doing the numbers that I haven't right. done yet. So um, I, I'm pretty sure I want to start at fifteen hundred. Well, Alina, we're going to talk through that right now. Okay. So first and foremost, I want you to list out your overhead, mm-hmm. right? And right now that might just be $300 a month, right? Mm-hmm. But then you're going to take into account any continuing education that you have, whether that's with the portrait system or the studio takeover, uh, a la carte courses through Creative Live you might be purchasing, in addition to your insurance and memberships with associations and every single thing that could possibly be tied. Mm -hmm. to your business that you pay every single month. Then I want you to add a salary. Okay. Okay. So even if that salary is, let's say it's twice what you earn at um, your your other job that's currently there as a base Mm -hmm. minimum, because it being twice means that now you can also pay for insurance. Then you can also, you know what I mean? Like the your salary that you receive through that other company is more than just what you receive. 30% of that is also paid by your employer for taxes, right? And then the cost of your benefits, right? So if you double it, right, that gives you kind of a a baseline to work from. Add all of that up. Okay. Then I want you to think about being at full volume, Mm -hmm. right? So understand that with this business model, you have meetings other than the photo shoot. Mm -hmm. And it's not take those meetings away so you can shoot more. It's organize them efficiently, right? Like I'm going to do consultations on maybe Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, right? Two mornings and an afternoon, whatever works for you, right? And then I'm going to shoot on these days Mm -hmm. and only these days. Think about which days you want to have with your partner. Right. And so right. you take the total number of days and think about vacations and la la la. Mm-hmm. So, okay, maybe that is eight days a month are purely for shooting. Well, now I have that overhead amount. You're going to divide it by the number of days that you have available to shoot. That's going to be at a bare minimum your target middle package. Okay. Okay. Then mm-hmm. build those packages around like quantities of five, 10, and 20 or 10, 20, mm-hmm. and 30. I don't know if you sell albums or folio boxes. Those are the quantities and that middle package. Let's say it's, you know, you're going to round up to the nearest thousand for starters. Okay. So if that means that you have to make $2,800 per customer, then mm-hmm. you're going to take that and that'll be $3,000. Now, the packages below it and above it, right? And there's only three. Don't do four packages. Don't do five packages. It's three packages. And 
that's going to be differentiated by either a thousand dollars each way or fifteen hundred dollars each way, depending. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if your average middle package, that target average sale is three grand, then the one below it is two grand. The one above it is four grand Mm -hmm. or the one below it is 1500. And the one above it is 4,500. I would recommend probably two, three, and four to get you started. Um, but you'll probably shift those prices after about six months to be three, four and 5,000, right? Because Mm -hmm. the next step from that is, okay, you have to price yourself to be generous because you will leverage gift vouchers to get people in the door. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you have to reduce their barrier to entry. If your a la carte image is $500 and your session fee is $500 that you apply toward whatever they purchase, well, if you take that $500 away, Understanding that 33% goes to taxes, 33% stays in the business for things like WPPI and Mm -hmm. imaging and and all of the things, then you're giving away your net. So you want to make sure that you're priced sustainably enough so that you still receive some profit in there. I would even start this piece now. Like once those numbers are done, like that's first and foremost, knowing what that sustainable number is. Mm -hmm. Then you're also going to do a thriving, like that first count is what you need bare minimum to survive solo on your own. Mm -hmm. And that means those expenses are going to increase too, right? right? Because there are, you know, whether that is hire an assistant or, Mm -hmm. you know, things like that move to a bigger space. And now you're going from $300 a month to maybe $1,500 a month for a new space, Mm -hmm. right? Know that those are going to inflate also, but you want to make sure, oh, that salary increases too. So put together a, if everything were working absolutely perfectly in an ideal world and I were thriving and just so excited to be alive, Mm -hmm. what does that look like? How much money am I making? Right. And then do the same math. Right. And then, okay, what do my prices need to be at this point? Now, what kind of photography do you want? Like what genre do you want to be focusing on? Uh, women, uh, whether that be mo- like modern glamour, boudoir, uh, headshots and branding. Um, I specifically okay. want to shoot win- women. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I do want you to create two different pricing menus, right? Okay. They can be the exact same price, mm-hmm. right? But you're going to have a digital list and an artwork list, right? Because the digital, okay. if you send a branding client your artwork list, they're going to be like, well, wait, what? Right. Yeah. But if it says these are digital collections, then it's just you bypass that altogether. Mm-hmm. Right. But for your wall art, right? So if you're shooting portrait and glam and boudoir and mm-hmm. all of that, like I want you to source really beautiful archival special products skip yeah. that middleman of it's super affordable. These are interim products. I'll start here. Okay. Just go together. right for graphy. <laughs> yes. Okay. Absolutely. Cause right now I'm using Miller's, uh, which are great. I mean, that's what I sold to that boudoir client, but after being at TPM and touching and feeling graphy, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, well, and there's a reason, and that's not to say like, we'll use Miller's oftentimes for prints, like mm-hmm. for the, the customer who's just like, you know what? I want, you know, just a 12 by 18. Like I'll order it through Miller's. Yeah, yeah. You know, simply because it's easier. But once you have, this is what I want to order from, like if it's Graphy Studio, right? Okay, for us, that is a leather, the acrylic pro, um, the pro canvas and the matte metal mm-hmm. as well as the mega matte. Right. And the way you organize that is make sure that at a baseline, your wall art starts in size, that it's at least double the size of whatever your packages are. So if your folio boxes, you know, like you have an upsell to the 11 by 14 box, mm-hmm. then that means that your wall art needs to start at least double the size of that 11 by 14. So okay. that would start at 22 inches. And it needs to be double the price, at least, of the a la carte print size or print cost, right? So if that's $500 for a five by seven, right, then, okay, 
that needs to be at least a thousand. But then you're going to take a look at what the price of all of those mediums are that you want to carry. Mm -hmm. And some people are just like, you know what? I just want to carry the mega mat. All right, cool. Right. Us, you know, we have the leather, we have the acrylic, mm-hmm. you know, all the things. So you take the most expensive piece for all of those mediums and you say you base all of your pricing off of that. So you know that it okay. has to start at least a thousand for, you know, that 20 inch, whatever. Okay. Well, if I know that it starts at, and I don't know off the top of my head, uh, what their price is, but the mm-hmm. most expensive piece maybe is the leather and a 20 inch print with the leather is let's say $250. Right. Well, now, you know, that you're not starting at a thousand dollars, but actually at 2,500. Okay. Because here's yeah. why Cog. everything yeah. comes ready for framing or ready for mounting. So it's already mounted and framed, mm-hmm. right? except for the mega mat. So now right. you say, okay, I'm going to double check with a local framer and say, you know, pick a, maybe one to three options for a standardized frame mm-hmm. that you give with any mega mats that are purchased. So right. now you're offering like, yes, it starts at 2,500, but it's ready to be hung on the wall. It's not just matted. It gives you enough wiggle room that you can still be generous. So instead of just a $500 gift voucher, maybe you meet someone at a networking event or a cocktail party and you're like, I want her in my folio. Her network is huge. I want to blow the doors off and give her a great experience. Mm -hmm. Now you can gift her $1,000, a $1,500 voucher to come into your studio and experience working with you. And it's not going to ruin your life. You are not left holding the bag with hair and makeup and all of the things. So when you give gift vouchers, do you allow them to apply it to a session fee or is it only like they still have to pay the session fee and then the gift voucher only goes to their own? I apply it for the value right up front. One of the things that we do with booking and it's, we have an agreement, right? A contract that outlines all of the expectations, all of the boundaries, but it also keeps a card on file. That card on file covers like if there are last minute reschedules and cancellations, there's a clause in there that we will process for rah, rah, rah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know it's a little tough to do this up front yeah. um, to take on the cost of a makeup artist and, and so on and so forth. And you could look at that a couple of different ways. Like I know Nikki Klosser would ask like, look, I would love to have you into the studio to do this photo shoot. Um, if you would like hair and makeup, you can pay for hair and makeup directly to the artist. Okay. Right. And so that was one way to do it for my first campaign. I think I I made it optional, right? Like you can come in absolutely, you know, like this is a $300 offer. I'm offering it for 125. If you'd like to add on hair and makeup, that's 150, like whatever it was at the time. Uh, okay. There are ways through it. The mm-hmm. idea though is, if you can't like the second you can afford to take on that $200 or whatever that investment is Mm -hmm. do it. Once you have your, your shooting system down so that you're providing like killer variety and you know, they can't help but walk away with at least 20 images, take that on because that's just allowing you to be generous and they will appreciate it because we don't include hair and makeup only for, because it makes retouching easier or whatever. Yeah. We also include hair and makeup because it allows that person to relax, Mm -hmm. feel cared for, and feel like we are on their side, right? Right. That's why like somebody doesn't like their hair and makeup, like look out because they're not buying a thing. Yeah. So making sure that during your consultation process, like you understand what it is they want to achieve in that Mm -hmm. space. Because some people are going to say, you know what? I don't really wear makeup. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So you want to make sure that that, that makeup selection is really very light handed. Right? I have a girl cause I've been doing, you know, some model shoots just to fill in the gaps in my portfolio. Uh, when I got back from TPM, I posted just a model call in one of the local Facebook groups. And that was to get a little more variety in my portfolio. Cause a lot of the girls look the same and I had a bunch of pictures of the same five people. So, sure. um, and I was also trying to try out some hair and makeup artists as well in like time for trade shoots. Uh-huh. Um, 
The only one that I've been able to book has booked has come a few times and I love her a lot. She shows up on time. She's really sweet. She gives them a little goodie bag. Bury of, her. Yeah. Yeah. But two of the models, because I send feedback questionnaires to everyone that I do folio builds for. Mm-hmm. Um and two of them have said they didn't really love their makeup, even though I asked them, I like asked her to leave, did the whole thing. Do you like your makeup? They said yes in the moment. And then afterwards they said no. So, but she's very sweet and like willing to learn. Like she's asked me a few times, like, if you don't like something I did, tell me, please. Like, don't just ghost me. (laughs) Well, (laughs) just about any makeup artist is very front. Like it doesn't hurt our feelings, guys. If you are in a photo shoot and you don't love your makeup, like say Mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Uh, But at the same time, right. At mm-hmm. the very same time, like, yes, you want them to leave the room, but you need to educate them about the capacity to do that at the consult. Right. Right. Yeah. It's not just ask the makeup artist to leave and pop the question to the, the mm-hmm. subject. It's during that consultation. You're going to talk through like, what is it? You know, we have this with the the client success bundle and the consultation collection is you're going through and asking people like, how do you want to feel? How mm-hmm. do you want your hair and makeup to look? What are you envisioning? And I've had people come in and be like, well, I want to do this crazy pompadour thing. And then I also want to do my hair down and glam. And I'm like, whoa, hold up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> We're not yeah. going to completely shift hairstyles. Right. But then also like what adjectives would you use for the makeup that you would like to see? Mm-hmm. And with a makeup artist specifically who is new, but willing to learn, send her every resource you can. You know, if you have makeup tutorials and la 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 for this is what I want my natural look to be. This is, you know, it's your mm-hmm. brand, right? So yeah, I sent her like the Sue's like makeup progression thing. Um, and the other thing, and she was like, thank you for sending this <laughs> because a lot of times people don't tell me what they want. Well, and they don't um, know. But I posted um, Brie is doing her own Instagram class. Yeah, I was um, going to say Brie Oro, Brie yeah. Brie Orozco is doing a, a class for that like beautiful Brie wave. And Brie, yeah. if you are listening, like every photography hairstylist in the universe needs to just go ahead and take Brie up on this course. It's yeah, I signed up for it because sometimes I end up doing hair, but awesome. I shared it on my Instagram just like any hair and makeup artist that want to take this, she's great. And she signed up for it. <laughs> like the girl that right. I've been working with. So she's like, she's down to like learn stuff. And mm-hmm. so I really like her a lot. Um, I'm doing a shoot for her as a trade for doing all of these for free for me mm-hmm. <laughs> these few times. Um, so I'd like to keep her if I can. Um, I love it. Yeah. You know, uh, cause when you can grow with other professionals and that's not yeah. to say that like, you know, they're, a part of your business. They're an employee, they're a partner, but mm-hmm. they are a resource and a great way to team build. There's a, a photographer here and my makeup artist that comes on the road with me is actually her primary makeup artist at Barago Boudoir. Mm-hmm. And like, they are thick as thieves. Uh, I think she did my hair for our shoot, right? Yeah. Tia. Yeah. Tia. Tia. I love her. Yeah. Uh, Tia Hickson Schrock is an amazing, amazing She's woman. She's great. Yeah. Uh, but like they have a beautiful relationship together as professionals, but their businesses are separate, even right. though Tia is the number one person that Sarah will work with, which is fantastic, mm-hmm. you know? And here I have makeup artists that I've worked with for years, Tia included, um, in addition to Leah Milan and Mandy Freeland. Um, right. It's just about building the relationships, having the flexibility to have others available is really yeah. helpful. But as you're getting started, like if you can really solidify that relationship now, like that's going to support you moving forward. Because a few of the other ones, like one of them just ghosted completely, didn't show up to the shoot. So I ended up having to do it. Others, you know, because I, I'm really, my availability for shooting is limited to weekends at this point. Um, so a lot of them can't do weekends, uh, Mm -hmm. because they're doing other stuff. So trying to find people has been a little bit of a challenge, but you know, well, and on the weekends too, especially during wedding season is going to be really tough for a makeup artist to commit to because those are 600 to $2,000 days for them. 
Yeah. So when a photographer's like, like, we don't even shoot on Saturdays here unless it's a come as you are, right. you know, like it's not even a, an option. Yeah. That's um, the goal. But unfortunately with the day job, it's, it's hard to do shoots on work days, even with the flexible schedule that I have yeah. the bulk of it. I might try, like I might offer some occasionally to see how it goes. Um, well, and if this hair and makeup artist or this makeup artist is available, then it's not really a, a yeah. issue. Right. But as mm-hmm. you're bringing other people on, as mm-hmm. your volume builds, um, like if she's not available, you need to have a resource that that you can call otherwise looking at, OK, my schedule is relatively flexible with this, you know, security job. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's kind of what I refer to as a day job. It's really meant to keep you secure and safe. Yeah. Um, what are you doing now for marketing? Uh, right now, nothing, uh, <laughs> to be honest. I, that's kind of one of my scary points of once I finish my website and stuff is now what? I have some networking groups that I have picked out that mm-hmm. I'd like to talk to, uh, mm-hmm. or, you know, go to a few events and join. Uh, networking has always been a scary thing for me. Just what is a, it that's, that's feeling scary about it? Uh, I have real bad social anxiety, especially in big settings. Uh, where a lot of people are talking. It's like my brain just shuts down. (laughs) Um, I mean, this year I was diagnosed with complex PTSD and ADHD. So I think both of those things factor into that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm on medication. I'm trying to work through all of those things. But when I get into a big social setting like that, it's like I just shut down. Well, how about instead of trying to beat yourself up over it, Mm -hmm. like kick yourself out of the comfort zone, Try scheduling some things on your calendar, right? And drink some Tulsi tea beforehand. Um, it's holy basil. It's actually quite yummy, um, but it will calm your nervous system. Before you walk in the room, like on the drive there, I want you to just spend the whole time while you're driving listing out everything you love about being a professional photographer and what it affords for your life right? I love Mm -hmm. meeting new people. I love making connections. I love it when people pay me. I love being able to play with my clients. I love making creative work. I love designing sessions in collaboration. I love working with my makeup artist. I love, Mm -hmm. I love my products. I know everything that you love. I love having weekends free to spend with my husband. I love Mm -hmm. being able to go on vacations and pay for them in full. I love this new car that I bought, right? Like whatever. Mm -hmm. And then when you walk in the door, just make everything about them. As an introvert, right? Especially when we're dealing mm-hmm. with PTSD and ADHD, introverts immediately go into, oh my God, we're all going to die, right? Mm-hmm. Because now there are more than three people standing in front of them. But yeah. that's because they're making it about themselves, right? Right. When you can transition that to being in service to everybody else in the room, it's no longer about you at all, right? So you're looking for, the guy standing by the window, not talking to anybody. You're looking at the guy who's petting the dog under the table. Mm-hmm. You're looking for that one person that's standing by the food, just kind of picking everything over, just asking about their opinions. You're not there to sell anybody. Right. You know, and I think that's something that a lot of photographers get wrong. They like spent so much time and effort working on this campaign and now they're launched and their business is open and they've got to get people in the door. Oh my God. So it's like, hi, I'm Kat Ford Coates. Do you want to come in for a photo shoot with me? It'll be $40 million. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Like, oh wait. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. And because everybody at a networking event, nobody's at a networking event if they don't need business one Mm -hmm. business networking. Right. But you can also think about social activities, like when you go to a New Year's party with your husband. Right. Right. Use that as an opportunity to practice. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you can make some really great connections at just standard evenings out going out in Florida. Right. And like really working to build clientele there. It wasn't just the networking meetings I was going to. I would go to bars in the afternoons and evenings and like talk to the bartenders, talk to the servers because. In any town, your bartenders and your servers have a vast network of people. Mm -hmm. And you ask them like, hey, where do the people that like buy Dior, where do they hang out? Right. Or Mm -hmm. what are some of like the most beautiful medical spas in the area? Or Mm -hmm. do you have any really great 
you know, just like day spas here, you yeah. know, like wherever it is that your women are, right? You're going to be asking just the bartender, like, hey, get a glass of whiskey on the rocks. Hey, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just curious, you know, like, do you have any recommendations for? Mm-hmm. Right? That's also networking. It doesn't right. have to be, I have to have my accordion card and my magazine, and I have to go in and sell everybody on my photo shoots. Like the first six months you're in any networking group, you're not going to sell a thing. It's just right? about getting to know everybody. Yeah. yeah. It's about getting to connect. So I would actually start doing that before you leave your job. And a lot of the networking groups for like business specifically are going to have some sort of you know, price involved. Yeah. So if you can kind of start saving up and kind of visit, you know, this chapter or that chapter for free before, you know, Mm -hmm. investing in them so that people know who you are, you can start kind of training people on your process. And and yeah. Uh, But if you can do that now by June, you'll actually start seeing some return on that investment. I was thinking of there's one group in particular. I was thinking of offering something like shooting one of their events uh like in the style of the oscars when they did those kind of vanity fair style photo booths for the people coming through like offering my services for free for that group in order to get access to some of the people that go to the networking group instead of just for access i would ask for membership a lot of photographers come into this space and networking groups and you know things like that are immediately going to go, oh, will you shoot our event? But here's what happens. The second you put a camera up, you don't actually get to connect with anyone. My preference is to sponsor events like that. But if I were starting from scratch. With no money. (laughs) With no money. Yeah. If I were starting my business from scratch and that were an opportunity and there was a local networking group, right, that had the archetype of people that I wanted to be working with, then I would offer to do something like the, the Oscar night event mm-hmm. for their, you know, big annual blowout in trade for their top tier membership. Right. So okay. most, most paid networking things, it's not just 800 bucks and you're in for the year. It's mm-hmm. $800 is the base rate. But if you do $2,000, it gets you this. If you do yeah. $6,000, it gets you this and lol, so much more, right. Mm-hmm. You're after that $6,000 piece. You're after that high dollar. You are Alina Lauren photography is now a paid sponsor every single month that is right. addressing the room at all of their events. Uh, and like go full tilt with that set as you can. Because when you can then get access to those people, right, then you can start making those gift voucher offers that are only available for that market at that dollar mm-hmm. amount, la la la, on a regular basis. Then you're setting yourself up as an authority, right? Like, I know I might be new, but I'm really fucking good. So it's not just, I want to shoot your event so you can let me in for free. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'd be happy to create this for your event, for your top tier membership. Any opportunity that you have to set yourself up as an expert you know, really should be considered heavily. One of the folio builds that I did uh, is a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. And she loved how her pictures came out. Um, And she said that they had, her her office had just gotten headshots done Mm -hmm. by another photographer, but they didn't love how they came out. Um, So she was like, you know, the next time we need one, we'll let you know. But she's like, I mean, they just paid for this, so they're probably not going to want to like pay for something else right away. How could I approach either her or what can I offer them to kind of get me in the door for something like that? Because those are always the questions that I have. Like, I would probably call and say, look, I know you guys just paid for headshots that you're never even going to use. It's already cost you the money that you put into that, let alone Mm -hmm. the time preparing for it, the time on the day, and then waiting to get those images back that you didn't really even like. I would be happy to offer all of the agents in the room, right? At your brokerage, like a $500 voucher toward a session with me Mm -hmm. that would be available on this date or this date. Right. And so you're setting yourself up, right? Like 
it'd be, and with realtors specifically, it can be tough to get them to come in on the weekends because those mm-hmm. are big working days for them. They're doing open houses. Yeah. That's when families are mostly available. Um, so you might look at taking a vacation day. Yeah. More. Like if that's, if that's possible, mm-hmm. um, I'd be happy to talk to you more about this. Um, and instead of just like charging everybody, like whatever it was that, that you did, I know that my work is, is much, much different than that photographer. Um, mm-hmm. but I would be happy to make this specific offer and you could do it like $500 a piece or do a more for more offer, right. Where I would give you like, let's say that your session fee of $500 includes 500, like you're applying at hundred percent for their order. Okay. Then I would be happy to offer everybody in your, in your office on these dates only, right? Uh, $500 session that we would apply as $500 value toward whatever it is that they choose to purchase for 250. So it's not a discount, right? It's not, Mm -hmm. you get 50% off and save it's, I'd really love to be able to serve your office and develop this relationship. And I would be happy to do kind of a, a double your dollars offer for them. Right. So you spend $250 per person. And this mm-hmm. is with everybody for that office, right? You spend $250 per person and we'll actually apply that as $500 toward whatever you'd like to purchase, whether okay. that's one image or 30, right? It shifts the narrative, right? But you have to be really kind of strict on your boundaries. Right. Right. So no, like it would be available maybe like Sunday and Monday. Right. Mm-hmm. So it all happens at the same time right. <laughs> relatively. And if you can shoot all eight people in one day, that's another story. Um, but mm-hmm. most photographers, when they're kind of coming out of folio building, like they're pretty maxed out on how many people they can do in a day. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we're looking at, you know, branding and headshots, you can really kind of streamline like, wall right. pose, freestyle, seated, next, mm-hmm. wall pose, freestyle, seated, next, and take it from there. Uh, but really it's like, you need to know what those dates are and be like, look, I really loved working with you. I know you said that everybody's kind of like, really, it's the end of the year, mm-hmm. right? Like, but I would really love to make this offer and it would be available on, you know, whatever two days, you know, you've got like a Sunday, Monday back to back that they can come in, they'd be here for about two hours, you know, and we would go through the process and, you know, they could apply that however they like. Do you think they would be interested? So your homework now is to do that overhead, Mm -hmm. that math, look at your calendar and say, all right, if I'm not working at this day job any longer, that safety job, how many days a month do I want to work? How many people can I shoot in a day? Right. And if you want to keep that at one until you have your system down, that's completely normal. But as you grow and scale, you'll find that you start building a workflow into your shooting system to where if you want to, you can photograph multiple people in a day. Right. Um, and then start looking, like you said, you've got some networking events picked out. Anything you can start attending now, Mm -hmm. just go and don't worry about having to be perfect. right? Right. And it's, I'm just trying to connect. I'm building my business and, you know, I'd love to see what's what's available and how I might be able to contribute. Do you prefer the tuna tartare or the shrimp? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. just make it about them. Because I, I started following this group and then I realized that there is another photographer already deeply ingrained in that group um, that does very similar work to me. I mean, she might even be in Sue's group. Um, and she's, she's way further along than I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she, like, she's done all of the, like the main people of the group's headshots. And is that, is that group even worth talking to? Uh, like, am I stepping on, on her toes? Is it just kind of a waste of time because they're loyal to her? I mean, um, you're in comparison, right? And mm-hmm. like, I appreciate the comparison, right? Because you're like, this is kind of somebody else's turf, right? I'm not mm-hmm. trying to piss anybody off. But at the same time, you're just trying to build your network, right? Right, And you have just as much of a right to be there as she does. Mm-hmm. Um, and if anything, it might kind of put her on her toes too and be like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's not to say that you have to buy in or really mm-hmm. you know, 
But as you like, while you're still in this other job, your job mm-hmm. is to simply get into as many rooms as possible to find right. the because eventually you'll turn around and realize that there are rooms that are totally on in alignment with your vibe. Right. Right. Like when I started networking, it was, you know, everything I could find that was free because I was broke, right? Mm-hmm. It was like everybody and their mother wanted to trade me. Right. And then I was uh, at first I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like I can build my portfolio here. So it's worth my mm-hmm. time. And then it was like, would I use this service? Okay, right. if I would use the service, all right, is it an alignment? And then I was like, oh, people keep ghosting on me. Yeah. Oh, it's because I'm not paying them. Yeah. So then I put in kind of a rule that was like, I will allow trade, but it's only on like a 50-50 scale, right? So 50% can be in value toward the studio, but 50% in cash, and that goes both ways. That way, when I walk in the door, they're not like, free I got those pictures a year ago. Why am I still doing this? Right. That way everybody's like, oh, hey, cat. They're glad I'm walking in the room. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I just kind of turn it on and turn it off. If I wouldn't use the service or the provider, then I'm sorry, it's not available. Um, but then I started finding rooms that I wanted to be in. And I mm-hmm. realized that some of them were costly to be in the room. So I looked for opportunities where I could trade that that value right for sponsorship mm-hmm. instead of just throwing gift vouchers at people to get in the door it was well i would be happy to you know contribute like if it was a six thousand dollar sponsorship six thousand dollars to photograph your board mm-hmm. right and everybody would get you know like a thousand dollar voucher or whatever uh to be photographed by me i would come to them like do a whole setup um but that got me that membership and sponsorship of that program for a full year. Uh, okay. And that worked, that worked really well and was way better than like, oh, well, I can't afford your thousand dollar entry fee, but you know what I can do, you know? And then mm-hmm. the, the value of what you're offering goes up too, because you're bringing experience to the table as well as like if a board's involved, right? Well, now you photographed everyone in authority for that networking group, mm-hmm. right? And they're, using it and they have that network for a reason. So just be really strategic with the offers that you make because you're going to find that the paid rooms oftentimes Mm -hmm. way more viable. Yeah. I was under the impression for some reason that the chamber of commerce was like free resources for business. I don't know why. (laughs) Um, so I was surprised to learn that you have to pay. Um, have you found the chamber of commerce worth so typically chambers of commerce are nonprofit, mm-hmm. right? So that might be where you thought like those resources would be free. Right. Uh, but it's not that they're free. It's just, they can't keep the money. The money that they charge for membership actually goes to produce the events that okay. they put on. Yeah. Uh, but the chamber is one of those things that you get out of it, what you put into it. Mm-hmm. So if they have evening galas, morning breakfast, networking things, the more of that stuff that you can go to, the more value you will receive because of it. But like, you can't just be like, here is my baseline $400 a year. And then expect that one email newsletter that went out, like that featured you, Mm -hmm. like that's not going to do anything. All that does, it's there to build credibility, but really like you're paying for access to the people in the room. You got some work to do, my friend. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yep. (laughs) Awesome. Alina, tell me, where can people find you online? Uh, So my website is Alina Lauren. That's A-L-E-N-A, Lauren, regular spelling dot com. um, And I'm Alina Lauren photo on Instagram. I love that. And what I really love about this is in one year and three years and five years, you can look back at this podcast episode and be like, look how far I've come. Mm -hmm. For sure. All right, guys, we will see you very, very soon. In the meantime, if I can support you on building your photo studio, please don't hesitate to reach out on theportraitsystem.com. 